What's going on, guys? Thank you. Appreciate it. How about them Broncos, as Jimmy Johnson used to say? Yeah, very much so. Um, those guys had the right mindset, which you have to when you're playing against an offense that is that good. I mean, they were ranked in the top three in damn near every category there was. I don't remember seeing such a good offense that was balanced like they were watching them all week. And for us to come in here and do that um, is just kudos to the players. They had the right mindset. They bought into what we had to do to have a chance to slow them down. And we did more than slow them down, so. Your, your corners had to play some one-on-one -on -one coverage. What do you think of how they matched up with their receivers? Well, for 56 minutes, it was a goose egg. You can answer that question. When you, you had told me during the week, Coach, that this team was going to have an edge, they didn't see any reason. And all your goals were in front of them. Did you sense that in practice when you got and when you got here today that today was different? Yeah, I did. Just a sixth sense that you get in coaching 37 years in the NFL. Um, you just you just sometimes know. Now we had a scare in the morning. Thought it might have been Kendall Hinton, uh, the uh, sequel. But um, the answer to your question is yes. How nervous were you? Uh, I was nervous, but I've gotten better over the years. In fact, I've gotten really good at things I have no control over. I don't sweat. There was a, a lot of rookies that stepped up today. Jonathan Cooper, Sertan, Caden Stearns, Javante. I mean, the list goes on. How big was that to see those young guys step up in that moment? It was great. I mean, it was the whole team, though. You're right with the guys you mentioned. But I mean, we had guys running in and out of there like, um, like crazy. Part of the problem there at the end when they got the two garbage touchdowns was uh, we ran out of guys, okay? And I had to play a personnel group that we normally wouldn't play then. And, but the whole team just had a tremendous mindset and it was a great team win. You know, our offense, we ran the ball well, we moved the ball. When you're playing that, Offense. Now, we were doing a great job defensively. I don't think they had many first downs in the first half when they got it. But we were getting first downs, which is critical when you're playing a team that good. You know, you want to play keep away. And uh, keep away as you're moving it and scoring. And we were doing both. Vicky, you think you held them to 0 for 4 on fourth down. And to get the two early, um, you know, you had a big fist pump after the, after the second one. How, how much do you felt like that set the tone to get those early fourth down stops? They're big, you know. Everybody wants to go for it on fourth down, right? Fourth and one, fourth and two. They cite all the uh, numbers and so on and so forth. But when you don't get them, uh, it hurts. And uh, we were the beneficiary of the hurts. Down. You mentioned down a bunch of linemen uh, throughout the game. Yeah. How impressed were you with the, the way they played physical and still were able to carry out the plan? Yeah, they went in there and did a good job. And, you know, Besides the guys that got hurt during the game, you know, Calvin was in there for Garrett. And Calvin came up to me after the game and assured me he played really good. And because um, um, Calvin is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, he's one of my favorites. I, I've always had confidence in this guy. And I'm anxious to watch the tape and see that if it's verified what he said. You said all the numbers that Dallas was putting up, you know, what did you see? In, in your scheme and, and in their offense that made you believe you could stop them? I just felt, you know, we had the right stuff to give ourselves a chance. We just had to do it the right way, call it the right way, which I'm in charge of, so you know that's going to be taken care of. And um, um, I just felt okay about it. I mean, I don't want to say good about it. You know, they've teams just haven't played them the right way. They are super talented, and they may score 35 points the rest of the season in every game, okay, because they're really good. Okay, they got talent at every position. You know, how many times did we come close to sacking Prescott today and we don't get him down? You know, you, that's talent. You know, that's not luck. That's talent, and he has it. And they're a great team, and I don't expect them to lose many more games. You run the ball well this time. Say that again, somebody? Do you have an injury update on I don't. It's too long.
you've run the ball well this season outside of maybe the Cleveland game. Was What went on in practice, was that a point of emphasis? Because you mentioned the keep away strategy. Did you challenge the linemen, challenge the backs? Everybody. You know, we had some different looks out there in the run game which helped us. Okay, we ran them several times and they don't work every time, but they work enough and it helped us. And I think we, once you feel it, you know, the guys feel it, there's a little bit more oomph in their game, you know? Was this the blueprint you had in mind coming into the season in terms of running it, manageable third downs, take some shots, and on defense? Well, I don't know that there's a team that doesn't have that blueprint, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, we, we want to be a good football team, meaning play good defense and have a good offense. Our special teams took the day off today, okay? But that one crazy play helped us a little bit. Um, so we get all three phases going. No matter who we got playing, we got a chance. You Think about it. But also kind of the confidence and swagger. So with a win like this, how much is this going to help down the line, kind of that belief that, okay, we've done it before against a good team, can do it again? Well, I, you know, I've always said doing something and accomplishing something gives you confidence and belief. You don't need to go sit on some psychologist's couch and get it. That's just a bunch of bullshit, okay? You got to do it on the field between the white lines. You got to do it with your actions, not with your words, okay? And we did that today. What did you see from the guys during the week to suggest they had the right focus and the right mindset coming into today? The uh, there's no one thing I could tell you. You just sense it. A lot of Bronco fans here today. Could yeah, you tremendous feel? support. Tremendous support. Broncos are one of the teams that travel in this league, and I think we have uh, John Elway to thank for that because – there was fans all over the league that jumped on the Broncos bandwagon from the 80s and 90s, just like the Packers got all their fans across the nation from the 60s. Steelers do from the 70s. We do from the 80s and 90s, thanks to John Elway. So I've been with a couple franchises that are like that. The Niners are like that to a degree. The Bears are like that to a degree. But those are big cities that have a lot of transplants all over the country. Denver's not so, so I think ours has got a little bit more oomph to it. Did you know right away on that Vaughn Miller? Is there a shift in the What's chemistry? that? After losing Vaughn Miller, is there a shift in the chemistry on the defense or what's the mindset? Oh, I don't know. I mean, let's not make anything out of that more than it is. Did you know right away, what? Did you know right away that it was a fumble <clears throat> recovery on that punt or what was it? Yeah, your... I knew that it, um, they had touched it past the line of scrimmage. And I wasn't sure we'd get it, you know, but luckily the officials got it right. Have you ever seen anything like that? Yeah, it's happened before. What do you think of Teddy's That's why last week when you saw us block those couple field goals, Justin's back there policing everybody not to touch it, okay? Uh, but Teddy's pass to Tim Patrick. What do you think of that play? And Which how one? was that, the 44-yard touchdown? Yeah, tremendous. That was a double move. Okay, we've been looking to do that. We did it. Pat picked the right time to call it. Teddy made a great throw. Tim made a great catch. All's good. Final two, Ryan, then Jeff. Uh, game balls? Yeah, I gave one to Kyle Fuller. You know, Kyle hadn't had a good season, as we all know. Hadn't been playing much lately. He has never played nickel in his entire career. And we put him in there this week, gave him a crash course, and he played nickel some of the time. Then we had an injury, he had to go to right corner. Then we had another injury, he had to go to left corner. Okay, so the guy played three positions in the secondary. I think played him well. He was a guy that had a good mindset for this game. And he's a pro, you know, he never got down on himself. He was frustrated, but you keep sawing wood and when your number's called, you'll be ready and he was ready. Is this where the bar is for your team? Oh, I don't know. We just we, we're five and four. The bar is to get to six and four. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, and uh, I gave one to uh, Javante Williams' first hundred-yard rushing game. I felt like a little bit of a profit there. At halftime, I told him I felt he was going to bust one, and he did there in that first drive. How long was that run? Thirty, and it was. A lot of work he did on that for that 30. And uh, in uh, 
tradition. I gave one to Bill Kolar last week because I've been having a different coach talk to the team on Saturday night. And Mont Curtis Mockins did it last night, and I gave him one. Okay?